Okay, guys. So back here, and uh, if you wasn't watching my previous 3D uh, printer videos or Craigslist videos, um, you know that I'm working on an a Anet a a a E10 printer, and so I got all the mechanical stuff done, and now I got to focus on the electrical control box. Um, so I did actually fire this up in the pre the first video, and you can see that it powered on. But uh, one of the things that this uh, printer has, it, it it's actually kind of unsafe. It doesn't. It needs a, a MOSFET, which I need on my Allen screws here. So let me come back. All right, got the screws off. Allen screw. It's a what is it? Like a two metric. Okay, I'm fixing stuff. All right, so there it is. Hope you can see that. Let me get a better look at the control board. Hold that. All right, guys. There's a close-up of the uh, board right there. That's the Anet board. I think it's pretty standard between the versions kids here messing with me and uh, so there actually is some uh, MOSFETs on the board but they're not big enough to handle the current that the uh, heater bed needs and, and the hot end but right now I'm just gonna mess mess with the uh, dude go over there so right now I'm just gonna mess with the uh, the hot end and I bought this MOSFET on Amazon I'll put a link where you can get it a couple bucks and let's drop whatever's in there and came with a couple connectors and there it is so it came with the wires and oh, dropped it already and actually I printed this out earlier this is for a uh, this is actually was designed for this and you can screw that onto the board right there those two screws right there uh, maybe you can see that maybe you can't behind there maybe you can, if I get closer up you can see that there's a couple screws back in there this will fit right in there under those wires, I can I can wire in the MOSFET right there. At the same time, I'm actually taking these wires out. I'm gonna hard wire them in there because uh, I mean, good luck trying to find a A net cable. And uh, yeah, this is different than a lot of the other ones. So all the other videos I've seen of the E10 don't actually have these external cables. So I don't know if I got an early version or a new version of this board. So all right, so I'm gonna move some of these cables to make room, and I'll be back. And I gotta get this thing mounted in there. So. Awesome. Alright guys, so I actually have to come continue on with it tomorrow because I have to get some screws for this thing. So yeah, they're like metric and uh, machine thread. But let me kind of give you a brief description of what the thing is supposed to do. It's kind of like a kind of like a car relay or sort of like that. So right now the the full current currently goes to the board. So it's through the hot end, right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the heavy current away from the board and sending it through this thing right here, right? So the old hot end wires, which are right there, I mean, I haven't thoroughly looked at this yet, will send a signal to this thing and activate the uh, MOSFET here. But the cool thing is this thing will be wired directly to the power supply in here with these little jumper cables. So the current... The, the heavy voltage, the amperage, is no longer going to be going through this main board. It's going to be going through this directly through this MOSFET, bypassing this board altogether. And the only thing that's going to be coming from this board is the trigger wire, which is going to tell this thing when to come on and when, when to come off. I don't know if it's pulse width modulator or not. Uh, I haven't really thoroughly looked at this board yet, but um, I'm trying to figure. Well, I guess a thermistor would have be uh, how it knows how hot, how hot it is. Um, but I don't know exactly 100% how it's controlling the actual temperature, you know, like how it can, say, go on or go off, or how it's going on. But, um, all right, so I'll be back tomorrow and get that going. Cool. I already forgot to show you this, but I started removing these old power connectors out of here because I, I, there's no way I'm going to find this connector, so I'm just going to rewire it. So with those wires I already bought and showed you. So i got to pull out the X motor cable, the extruder, and one of these end stops, and that would be the X end stop. So I'm gonna pull these out because I'm gonna put the MOSFET in right now. I'm hoping to have less wires in there to mess with. All right, so that should just come right off that little nut, and I should just be able to pull out. Cool. Okay, guys. So uh, I just removed the wires from the uh, bed. I'm gonna move those over to the MOSFET right here where it says bed and hot. These two wires will go there. And I'll show you that in a second. 
All right, guys, so I have them put right there on the bed, and it's not very, really I don't know if I mentioned this, it's not polarity specific because, you know, the heater bed is just really one big short. So, I guess it doesn't matter if you the polarity, but the polarity is important, though, when you're looking at the power supply because the transistor won't work right. All right, so DC in, there should be a positive and a negative. Now I gotta move that over to the power supply. And I'll leave that right now. So uh, it did come with the two extra wires here, positive and negative. So I'll get that wired right now, get it going. All right guys, so if you look at the back of the power supply, the COM is the ground, and uh, common ground, and the V plus is the uh, 12 volt. So I have an extra pin on that side, and an extra pin on that side. I move, might move these around a little bit, uh, I don't know if there's a specific amperage rating, but... Um, Alright, so I'm going to get these two wires that I just fed down into the MOSFET into that. Alright. Alright, well, hell off on the, the power wires, just because this would be harder to put in there, the trigger wire. So what this do is, does is... This is what it's sort of like the relay that I was trying to explain to you. Um, is this actually, this is what triggers the MOSFET to go on and off. So I need to feed these back down to the original spot. Like I said, this isn't polarity, shouldn't be polarity specific either. Um, okay, yeah, and then I'll put those right into the uh, little connectors right there. And that will trigger the MOSFET. All right, guys, I just realized that the, uh, the wires they supplied weren't long enough to get to the power supply, so if I put it back down here, it wouldn't reach. So I have to go buy some uh, pretty heavy-duty looking wire. I'm not sure what gauge this is, but I'll, I guess go, I'll, instead of going to the electronic store, I'll just go to the auto parts store. It's closer. And uh, All right, cool. Um, all right, that kind of sucks, but probably could cost me an extra $10 in wire, probably. All right. What's up? So I'm not sure what the reason why this guy sold this, but I did notice this wire was extremely loose. Uh, one of these wires, that's the extruder wire. I mean, not the extruder, but the hot end wire. So the hot end might have never got hot. I'm not sure. That could have been the reason why this person sold it. But... All right. Oh, yeah, since I had to get different... Uh, oh, wrong wire. <laughs> Bring it that way. Um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna solder all the wires here. So, all right, all right, guys. You can cheap. You can see this thing was cheaply put together just because you shouldn't be moving this much current with just shitty crimped wires. So I'm gonna just fix everything, resolder everything. All right, guys. So everything on this bus has been. I crimped these. Uh, these wires were just loose wires that had in there. I crimped those down, soldered them, soldered every single wire in that bus. So I'm going to try to find anything that looks like a problem wire and just kind of solder. Like this right here, the, the main power goes to the board. I think it's just loose wires going to this connector. So uh, I'll double check and verify. But uh, yeah, that's it. So this part of this, the MOSFET part of it. And uh, yeah, kind of fun. I mean, it's just cool, you know, being able to actually figure out what's going on with this thing and really truly understand how this thing works. Um, so like when I do actually have problems and I have to troubleshoot, you know, I'm gonna have a thorough understanding of how this thing actually works internally. So like I say, if the, well, the extruder stops motor stops working, I know where to look on the board or the uh, hot end or whatever. I know exactly where to look. Uh, it's not even really a money issue. This this whole project's kind of fun for me. So it's, I mean, if I wanted to, I, I could go out and buy like an expensive 3D printer. But this is more fun because this it allows me to actually learn this stuff internally, not just basically you know, the, the software. So, all right, cool. All right, guys, so I have the, um, all the motors. These are the new wires I actually made right here for the motors, label them. The little black things are the uh, stop switches for the Y and X. That's the extruder, the E is the extruder, and then uh, that's the Y. But I'm also, right now, I'm gonna actually put it, I'm not gonna wire it up internally, but, I'm gonna put the uh, uh, capacitive uh, bed leveling sensor here, and I'm gonna wire it up. And I'm gonna use this hole, and I'm gonna put. Uh, I just went to Marvac, and I got. Uh, so it's getting messy because I'm building right here. I'm gonna put this little six-pin DIN connector here. I'm gonna drill it out because I want to be able to remove it because 
you know. I mean, if I ever want to take this thing apart and move it, you know, take it with me somewhere, I can do that. It's not going to be uh, permanently attached. And that's going to be the other side for this. But at the same time, I'm also going to run a uh, power cord up there for an LED light eventually, which I'll have in the front here with like some kind of switch or something. It's the same way I did with the printer bot, where I can turn an LED on and off. So, so I have it all wired up. So the cool thing is right, right now I'm just going to, I'm not going to, because I still have to upgrade the firmware to get this thing active, the uh, capacitive switch. But the cool thing is I'm just going to have it where I can pull one wire. So where, where's the Z? Where the Z is at? I can just pull this, the Z right here. The Z, this is the Z right here. So all I have to do is pull this out and switch it over with the, uh, I don't have the same little connector on there. And I can, you know, just plug in this thing if I want to, if I have a problem with this thing, I can just switch it back to the uh, stop switch, or I can just quickly go back and forth. So, all right, get that going. All right, guys, I decided to put the auto bed leveling thing when I get back. So, so I was gonna put this back together, see if I can get to fire up, and uh, I'm gonna go up to Big Bear this weekend to finish the upstairs of the house, and kind of want something to play with when I'm there at night. So, um, all right, cool. Let me get this going. All right, guys. There's my first fire up. You can see that screen? Probably some glare. But uh, everything says it's ready, so I might have to try to figure out how to calibrate this thing and uh, do some test prints. But well, let's see. So far, so good. All right, guys. Let's see, we got it going. Print this out. Let's see what's up. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the, uh, I'm not sure if it was done at the factory, whoever put this together. Probably at the factory, I'm not sure, but the fans were backwards. The uh, heat sink in there, the cooling fan, they were, they were wired opposite back here on the control panel, so I had to fix it there. Like the deck fan was uh, coming on all at all, 24-7, and this wasn't coming on at all, so they were in the reverse. So all I had to do was pop the wires out and flip them around in the control box. But... Uh, we're going. This is the first successful print so far. Hi right, guys. A lot of noise in here, but that's my first print with this printer. Um, pretty cool. Definitely a lot more, a lot more quiet than the uh, maker bot here. Or not the maker bot, the printer bot. Um, the thing about that fan issue was, uh, like, if this thing was actually out of the box like that, um, I mean, that would actually. Uh, the guy would have been seriously confused that I got this printer from, you know, because you, you weren't cooling off the extruder, or not the extruder, but the uh, heat sink, the uh, hot end. So I'm sure the the melted the, the, the film was melting too high into the uh, tube here. I only knew that because I'd already been messing with the printer bot. But if I was a total rookie and just bought this printer, I'd have been pissed because this thing probably wouldn't have worked right. It might have worked okay, but it just, you know, it would have messed up the, uh, you know, the uh, filament. So, awesome, that's the end of this video. Uh, next video I'm going to be doing is a firmware update. Um, I'm going to be putting the uh, capacitive sensor on that thing. And, uh, uh, firmware update? Yeah, I'm tired. Doing this all day long, troubleshooting. Oh, I also had to reverse the pins, too. The, the motors were backwards, so I had to figure that out. So, alright guys, cool.